Praise God. So glad you're back with us. We're continuing a conversation that we started on last week when we talked about what's going on in Congress. This week, we're going to dig further into the amount of corruption, the amount of corruption. This is an agenda of the enemy in America and around the world to set up these idol worshiping mountains in our governments and around the uh, around the nation. And so it behooves us that we understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to his church so that we can respond, so that we can be prepared. I'm going to pray uh, and then we'll dig into the word of the Lord. God, we thank you for your word, which is, is pure, it's true, it converts the soul. Glory to God. We thank you for your statutes that are, are sure, God. They are founded upon the rock of Jesus. They are unshakable. Glory to God. You are unsearchable. You are beautiful and majestic. You are uh, the depths of your love are beyond our understanding. If we had 10,000 tongues, Lord, we could not describe your goodness. We praise you for this time together. We thank you for the communion of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fellowship even of your sufferings, God. We pray into those who are being persecuted around the world and the persecution that's coming to your church even here in North America. We thank you for it. We know that it's because of you, God, that we can endure and love unconditionally. Now, Lord, I pray for the spirit of prophecy to fall, the testimony of Jesus, the truth of your word to edify, encourage, build us up, strengthen us, God. Give us clear vision. Give us understanding and wisdom. We pray for the sevenfold spirit of God. We need the spirit of counsel and might. We need the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We need the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of the Lord. Take over my mouth and my mind, God. I pray you give me a heart like Moses, that it's not about me, that I can be meek, Lord, and allow you to use me for your kingdom glory, for the building of your kingdom. May every ear that hears this, God, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Now I pray you'll be well pleased with me and even the meditations of my heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we do love you, Jesus. Hey, I'm so glad to be with you yet again. This is Faith Fire Media. It's a, a part of Faith Fire Worldwide Revival Ministries, which is a ministry based in North Carolina. I'm Frank Mickens, and uh, we do this. We, we share the word of the Lord here on YouTube or your podcast or wherever you might be catching us right now, because we believe that the Lord is building revival in his church and he's bringing awakening to the world. And so this is an end time prophetic ministry that's about revival in the body of Christ. And it's about awakening in the world to the love of the Father. We do the work of the evangelist, yes, but our primary focus is about prophetic ministry. We want to be a voice of the Lord. We want to be those who are speaking the Father's heart. And it's very important because in this time, we call it the information age, there's a lot of voices. There are a lot of people speaking, and many of them are not speaking the heart of God, even when they speak in Jesus' name. And so God wants us to have our souls set free from things that are distracting us from his goodness and his love. So I pray that you'll sit back, relax, even if you're on the treadmill, relax your heart and mind and begin to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. We're picking up from where we um, chatted last week. We were talking about what was going on in Congress and the compromise that we saw from believers in Congress who voted in favor of uh, the Respect for Marriage Act, which enshrined in the law respect and acknowledgement of same-sex marriage. And, and how they did so in exchange for religious liberty and how the spirit of compromise was what the Lord had been speaking to my spirit. He'd even been speaking it to my spirit before he gave me this vision that he shared with me uh, and I gave you last week, the vision of the fox and, and the embodiment of this, this fox and how it's uh, been, been infecting uh, our nation, even in the halls of Congress, even on Capitol Hill, the little foxes, amen. We talked about Song of Solomon chapter two, verse 15, where it says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine, for our vine has tender grapes. And we talked about how these little foxes, these little demonic, uh, demonically influenced acts, these, these spirits that take over people's minds and influence them to do political things or to compromise, they don't understand that while it seems like a small thing to do something they know they don't believe in in exchange for something they do, it actually creates a, a space for the enemy to take more ground and more territory in the spirit realm and to influence our nation even the more. And so we need to be very keenly aware of these things, especially as intercessors and prayer warriors. If you're a prophetic person, you need to know this is going on so that you can pray and get the heart of the Lord uh, on what he, what he wants to happen in the spirit realm in our nation. And so we need to be praying so that the angels can come for our words and go to battle. Amen. So let's talk about the amount of corruption, that this is an amazing teaching the Lord gave me back in November, and I'm getting around to it now. I did not know that it was going to fit with what we just saw in Congress. It was the Lord even preparing me for what we're seeing in Congress. 
But the Mount of Corruption is basically a place where Solomon set up worship spaces for idols. Now, what amazes me about this is Solomon is the son of David. We know that the Lord Jesus prophesies about David in the Psalms. He prophesies about David in the story of David uh, in the book of First Chronicles, even in the book of First Kings and, and how uh, Second Samuel, I should say, and how David was going to have a throne that would have no end. But his son, it only took one generation because what his son saw in him, in David, he took to the next level. And because David had several wives and concubines, Solomon began to compromise like David did, but he took it to the next level, which makes the point that I was just sharing, that the small foxes didn't seem like a big deal. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me, but not all things, I will not be brought under the power of any of those things. So you might have liberty to do something because you can choose to do it, but you can be brought under its power if it's not from the Lord. And that's what the amount of corruption turned out to be. So David leaves Solomon to building the temple. We know the story. He prays for wisdom. The Lord gives him wisdom, but even his carnal nature superseded the wisdom of God. How do we know this? Because Solomon began to make political allegiances with other nations and he would uh, basically have those things codified or he would legislate those alliances by taking on those nations, nations people as a wife. He would take on a member of the royal family from another nation as a wife. And so he was inviting into his space a person, a woman who did not worship God. And instead of teaching her about God and showing her the love of God, he indeed would build high places or places of worship for their idol gods, thinking that it was no big deal. Small fox. Just a little thing. I know it's not God's will, but I'm doing this for a bigger purpose. I want peace for my land. How many times are we going to hear people say, I'm doing this for peace. I'm doing this so that everyone's getting along. Well, listen, politeness is not from the Lord if it's uh, something you're doing in exchange for your soul. <laughs> but this is what we need to understand. The whole nation can be infected by the acts of leaders. Why? Because the nation, in fact, is already supporting their leaders. And so when their leaders do something that their wicked hearts already agree with, it emboldens the people to be even the more wicked. And that's the danger of what we're seeing in America and all over the world, is that the leaders speak about the character of their people as much as the people speak about the character of their leaders. It's an exchange. They both um, are impacting one another. Amen, somebody. So whether you're watching us here on YouTube or if you're listening on your podcast, I really want you to understand this concept that the Mount of Corruption was a place where a good person who loved God compromised to those who did not love God for the purpose of keeping the peace. So, and then as a result, the entire nation was infected. Why is this a problem? Because it takes us out of the perfect fellowship with the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about a nation that serves the Lord is great. Amen. The Bible talks about when the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, they mourn. So our generations are in people are impacted beyond our natural scope of understanding. It's always bigger than we think. And the enemy knows this. The enemy knows this. So read this with me. Second Kings chapter 23. And we're going to start in verse 13. We're going to read uh, verse 14. Second Kings 23 and 13 and 14. It says, then the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem, which were on the south of the Mount of Corruption. There you have it, the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Sidonians, for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the people of Ammon. And in verse 14, it says, and he broke in pieces the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images and filled their places with the bones of men. Here we see a passionate destruction of idols by a good king, but they were set up by a wicked, uh, by a wicked king. Josiah comes and he is, an, he is a reformer. What does he do? He removes the places that people were going where their hearts were being stolen. He's looking to remove the adultery from the hearts of the people by, by removing the places they go to be perverted. 
And that's how you bring righteousness to a nation. You don't you don't legislate the sin into the law in order to make things better. No, you remove the sin, remove options and cause people to begin to cry out and the Lord will answer their cry. You begin to allow the righteous to teach others and to show others the love of God. But in our nation and in nations all over the world, we believe that the government is not. That's a problem. So let's talk about these three deities. And this is a refresher for some that saw or listened to our last installment. We talked about this. Ashtoreth, a female deity that's associated with lust, sexual immorality. That is a principality. It was a principality for uh, the Sidonians and it's a principality in America. Why? Because we worship this idol. People worship this idol. People believe that lust is okay. Sexual immorality is okay. Remember, we're talking about uh, the Respect for Marriage Act and how it was codifying, it is codifying same-sex marriage in America. That's sexual immorality because the people are crying out for it. The people want sexual immorality. They want the liberty to do what they want with their bodies. How many people do we hear say, it's my body, it's my right? The problem with that is, Ashtoreth was worshiped through temple prostitution, people's bodies being prostituted for the worship of this, this deity. So our bodies now are being defiled by this spirit and it's a principality in the land. It's impacting people, it's impacting children as they're being born. They're being brought into an atmosphere that's influenced by sexual immorality and it will have generational impact until we repent and turn to the Lord. Chemosh was an idol that required human sacrifice. It wants to take you out. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So as we worship these idols, we allow this amount of corruption to be built. We're bringing this sacrifice of our taking life from us. And the, the, the word or the name Chemosh means conqueror. The idea of the enemy is to bring us to our knees. This is why we need to pray. The third uh, deity or principality that Solomon set up on the Mount of Corruption which is also being set up in our, uh, our, our nation, is Milcom, also known as Molech or Moloch. Many people know that name. This is the idol associated with the sacrifice of children, and we know abortion in our land is a principality. Why? Because the people are crying out for it. The people are saying, it's my body. You can't tell me what to do with it. They're allowing the wickedness and the desperate wickedness of their hearts to rule their minds and their behavior, and they're seeking for the government to agree. And so they get voted into office, and they go for these things. And so the leaders are mirroring the people and the people mirror their leaders. So the only way to get this to be taken out of the land is for reform. And the reform has to come by the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord came upon Josiah. He began to have the word of God read to him and the spirit of the Lord convicted him that his nation had, had left the Lord. And the thing about this is it takes generations. And so I pray for patience for us. I believe the Lord is allowing a lot of this stuff Allow persecution to come. He's going to allow a lot of the the things we've chosen, uh, the things that we've codified in our laws to come back to bite us because he is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we will reap. If we sow to the flesh, we reap in the flesh. And so we're going to see these things, but it's going to cause a crying out. It's going to cause people to uh, who have who have um, joined themselves to this nation. It's going to cause them to come to the end of themselves and realize that everything they need is in their father's house that they're not, that they're a foreigner here, that they're a pilgrim in the earth, that their real home is in the Father's house, and that he has everything that they need. So this is part of, of what God does. This is why we need to be, read the book of Psalm 105, where it talks about how uh, God allows trouble so that we can cry out to him, and he can show his wonders among the, the children of men. But pray into God getting all of the glory while you also pray that there will be reform. How do we pray? We pray for the cleansing to continue, there's a major cleansing coming. God is restoring true worship, but we have to allow the way we've been corrupted to be removed in order to get to true worship. So pray that the body of Christ will be cleansed. Now, I'm going to wrap up here shortly, but I got to make this point. The Mount of Corruption also is known as the Mount of Olives. So where Jesus went to meet with the Father was the Mount of Corruption. Where Jesus showed up and sat and revealed himself and ministered and worshiped where Jesus walked, where Jesus ministered and met intimately with his disciples is the same place that previously was a 
amount of corruption. That's what God wants for our nation. He wants to cleanse it through the power of the Spirit, moving through people uh, here on the earth, reforming and destroying idol worship so that Jesus can be here and have intimate fellowship with his people. Jesus would go to the Mount of Olives daily, morning and night, and he would sit and look down on the temple, his father's house, which literally was an embodiment of himself. Amen. He brought the father. He was the one who brought the spirit into the earth. He was the one who was the temple of the spirit of God before we were. And so he wants to see that revived in his church. But we've got to pray into the cleansing of the church for all of this to happen. And I'm going to leave you with this because I did want to make this a 15 minute uh, message and, and, and I'm a little over already. As we think about the amount of corruption, let's think about the end game for Jesus. We don't need to keep our eyes on the sin. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. He's going to cleanse the amount of corruption. He's going to cleanse the nation. He's going to cleanse Capitol Hill. That has been a place where Ashtoreth and Chemosh and Milcom have been worshipped. He, he's going to cleanse America where Ashtoreth and Chemosh and Milcom have been worshipped. But he's going to cause it to be cleansed so that we can have intimate relationship with him. I'm going to read this to you. John 4, 23 and 24. But the hour is coming and now is. Meaning it's happening now, but there's a fullness that is to come. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's what God is doing. He is reviving his church. He's allowing the enemy to get this far. He's allowing the enemy to have the little foxes grow up and take more and more territory. So the people of God will have more of an awakening to wait. We need to do something. We need to pray. We, don't, we need to stop pointing fingers. We need to stop expecting our politicians to get loud and proud and scream and act out of character. And we need to begin to pray. We need to begin to bow our hearts before the Lord. We need to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the fiery furnace that had been turned up seven times. That's what's happening right now. He's allowing the kingdom of Babylon, the kingdom of darkness, to turn up the heat on the people of God. And he's expecting us to step into the fire because we will refuse to bow to the idols. And in the midst of it, the Son of God will be there with us as we bow our hearts before him in the midst of the fire. And that the outsiders, Nebuchadnezzar, the people who had no interest, the atheists had no interest in trusting God, will see the heart of the Father in us. We'll see that we have no remnant of the fire, that we have no smell of the ashes on our bodies. And they will marvel at seeing Jesus in us, seeing Jesus with us and bring awakening. He's restoring true worship in the church at all costs. We will love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind and strength so that people will see the pure, unadulterated, piercing light of God's love. I pray you'll pray with me into that and let us pray together before we wrap up. Lord Jesus, we trust you. I pray that you allow patience to have his perfect work in us. Glory to God. I pray for perseverance for us in prayer. I pray you remind us about Luke 18 and how we are to pray and not give up because you hear your people. You will bear long with us, but you will answer us speedily. It might not be when we want you to answer, but you hear us. You're collecting our prayers up in the bowls of heaven. And there's a Kairos moment when our prayers will reach such a threshold that you will act and you will bring deliverance to your people and you will bring a light to the Gentiles. You'll bring light to the unbelievers. God, I pray for Joel 2.28 to come alive in us, that you pour out your spirit all over the world in a new measure, God. You're pouring it out right now. You're pouring it out right now. And many just can't receive it. But God, I pray for open hearts and good ground to receive the word, to receive the saving grace of Christ, but also the infilling of the Holy Spirit, for them to be full of the Spirit, to receive it as a fountain of living water. We pray that as you move in this world, move in our nation, that we will patiently pray and seek your face, that we might turn from our wicked ways, God. You'll hear from heaven, forgive our sin and heal our land. We want healing in the land that glorifies you. We don't want healing that comes about through our legislation and our exchanging our souls for something that says peace. No, God, we want to profit in the spirit, not on the earth. We want to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven because that is where our heart needs to be. I thank you for every ear and every heart that's listening to this message. May you encourage them to stay on the wall and be patient to endure affliction. Glory to God, because you 
deliver us out of all of them. I love you, God, and I give you thanks. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. I have a smile on my face if you're just listening to us on a podcast because I have the joy of the Lord. These are, these are turbulent times. We're in a shaking, but it's all because of God. He's shaking all things so that those things that are eternal will remain and everything else will fall away. Hey, we rely on the, the giving of, of listeners just like you for this ministry. Would you consider praying and asking the Lord to sow into this ministry? You can go to faithfireworldwide.com to give. You can also find information there on how to mail a check or however. We just know that God has sent us into this full-time work for the kingdom of God for such a time as this. We are an end times prophetic ministry. We want to see revival in the church and awakening, awakening around the world to the love of the Father. And that's what we're working toward. And in that same vein, we've been invited to go uh, to many nations in 2023. We're in a $20,000 uh, giving campaign. And we invite you to pray and ask the Lord, would you give into that campaign? We're in the midst of it now. We're expecting to be in Uganda and Kenya in February and Central and South America later in the year. My wife and children say thank you. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you for being in the family of God. And I hear this for someone. The Lord is saying he stands at the door and knocks. And if you open the door, he will come and commune with you. Make space for the Lord. Who am I speaking to today? He's asking for more time. He's asking for more time. He's asking for less talking and more listening. Sit at his feet like Mary and hear his words. God bless you. Until next time, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord touches you deeply and ushers you into great peace. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Thank you.